everybody. How are we doing today? We're going to wait for a few more people to come on in here, but I want to welcome you to our program today. Can you raise your hand if you can hear me okay? Awesome. And you would just do that on the bottom of your screen. Looks like a lot of people are able to hear me. Awesome. Well, again, we're going to get started in about one minute because I want to make sure everybody has some time to funnel in. But my name is Sarah, and I am here at Pismo State Beach Monarch Butterfly Grove. It's a long title, but it's a beautiful place that I get to share with you today. I'm so excited. Before we get started, I want to put a slide up on the screen with some of our information. And kiddos, if you want to take this time to go get a piece of paper or a pencil, if you would like, or anything that you think you might need for this program, we're not going to be taking notes or anything. If you feel inspired to draw a beautiful butterfly during or after the program, go get the things you need to do that now. But if not, all you really need is some really great listening ears today and probably your imagination. And if you want, you can go get that piece of paper and pencil. So I'm going to start by putting our information up on the screen here. And do not worry if you are unable to catch this right now, because I will also be putting this up at the end of our program. So raise that hand for me on the bottom of the screen. If you can see this orange graphic. Great. Awesome. It looks like we're able to see it. So this is important to our program today because if you have any questions, if you want to share with me anything that you've made either during or after this program, which I would love to see, I want you to share those with me and here's how you can do it. I encourage maybe parents, if you want to take a screenshot of this, totally fine and we will go ahead and put it up at the end of the program as well. But questions can come to this link right here. It's www.padlet.com slash Pismo Beach slash Butterfly. And then we also have this Padlet up. This is for our Oceano Dunes questions. And it's the same Padlet.com, but slash Oceano Dunes slash questions. So we do operate both of those Padlets. They're great for asking questions or even just checking out for fun. Of course, please follow us on social media or this is a great way to share your art with me today at Ports Program. That's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and our YouTube as well. And that's going to be our Ports Wide information with the hashtag Ports Program and hashtag Ports Fan Art. So both of those would be great places to share your beautiful art or maybe a fun video of you participating today. I'm so excited to have you all here. So again, I will put this up at the end of our program as well. All right. So I'm going to lower these hands right here. Thank you, everybody, for joining me today. And there is a raise your hand feature at the bottom of the screen. That's what I keep talking about when I say raise your hand, depending on the device you're on. That's how we're going to participate today. So we're going to practice really quick. And I want you to raise that hand. If you can't on your screen, maybe raise it in real life. If you are excited to learn about our monarch butterflies today. Awesome. Very, very cool. Well, I am so very excited to share as much as I can with you about these beautiful creatures. Now, I want to start by saying that us here at the Pismo State Beach Monarch Butterfly Grove are a little bit sad because our butterflies are not here right now. Now, that's totally okay because that's very normal. Our butterflies come to see us in the winter. So unfortunately today, it's not winter time, but this is a great opportunity to learn about our grove. So when things return to normal and you're able to visit our grove, you can do so knowing so much about the butterflies. So you might be saying, okay, Sarah, why in the world are the butterflies not there? And we're gonna talk a little bit about that. We're gonna talk about where they go. I'm going to introduce you to one of my very special friends that I work with here at California State Parks. I'll be, share, I'll be sharing her with you a little bit later. So we're gonna talk about her, we're gonna talk about her life cycle. Basically all that means is how she got here. 
how did my friend get to the Pismo State Beach, Monarch Butterfly Grove? Where did she come from? And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to a very special friend today. And I'm really excited to share her with you. Raise your hand if you can see my friend Molly the Monarch on the screen. Awesome. So she's going to help me do some teaching today. She's going to be like my assistant teacher today because our story is all about Molly the Monarch. Now raise that hand if you've ever seen a monarch butterfly in real life before. A western monarch butterfly. Awesome. Looks like a lot of us have, which is so cool. That makes this all the more exciting. So Molly the Monarch, how in the world did she get to be at Pismo State Beach Monarch Butterfly Grove? Well, the answer is a word called migration. And I know that sounds like a big fancy word, but it's an important word. And raise your hand if you've ever heard that word before, migration. It's okay if not, that's why we're here today. We're gonna learn all about what it means. So the best way to think about what migration means is just to move or to travel. So some of you might have been moving about your houses this morning, or some of you may have traveled in the past, maybe out of the country, maybe across the sea, but you're traveling. I see some hands going up, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that to mean that we've done some traveling and we've done some moving in our lives. And so do monarch butterflies. The monarch butterfly that we have here is called the Western monarch butterfly. And that is because California, raise your hand if you are from California. All right, I love to see it. I am also from California. So the Western monarch butterfly is kind of on the Western side of the US. That's why we throw that Western name in front of our monarch butterfly. But how did they get to be here? Migration, so movement, they move. And I know that sounds kind of confusing because you can say, obviously, Sarah, I've seen them fly. I know that they move, but they move long distances, okay? So I'm gonna show you this map here. And it might look kind of confusing at first, but it's totally okay because all you need to know in order to understand this map is kind of what seasons are like. So raise that hand if you have ever heard of what a season is, maybe with the weather, awesome. Yeah, so I'm gonna share this. And this graphic or this picture shows you that monarchs move, they move. And so it's important to know a few things about their movement. So I'm gonna be drawing in my red pencil here. And generally speaking, this is where they come to visit. Raise your hand if you can see that red mark I just made. Awesome, looks like a lot of us can, that's great. Thank you so much for your participation. That really helps me today. So they come to see us in the winter. That's why I've chosen to draw these snowflakes. So those snowflakes mean that they come to the west coast to the beautiful beach in the winter. And as the months get warmer and warmer, so I have my spring flower in my summer sun here, as the months get warmer and warmer, the butterflies are able to move further and further away from us. So let's see here. I'm gonna explain a little bit about what that means. I'm here at Pismo State Beach. Raise your hand if you think that a beach is a pretty great place to spend the winter. If you're a butterfly and you need it to be pretty warm, you probably wanna to come to a beach, right? Awesome, I see a lot of those hands going up. So the butterflies, the Western monarchs, spend their winters here with us in Pismo State Beach Monarch Butterfly Grove. And then as the months get warmer and warmer, they're able to wait, make their way back up north. Now these, I need to point out that these butterflies are traveling by states. So raise your hand if you have ever driven across a state, a whole state. So picture being a butterfly and flapping your wings all across the states. They move many states away up north towards Canada, and then they come back down. 
Now, how this happens is one butterfly can't make the whole journey. Molly the monarch, she's a very strong butterfly, but she can't make the whole journey. So what happens is their lifespan, they only live about a month. They live about a month. And then every once in a while, special generations live longer than that. And those are the really strong superheroes that make their way from Canada all the way down to Pismo State Beach to where I'm standing right now. And then they have babies, and then those babies have babies, and those babies have babies. And then those superheroes, that generation, makes a huge trip down. So that's a little bit about the word migration. So let's think, okay, migration means to what? Migration means to move, right? So I'm gonna need everybody to stand up and we're gonna do some migrating, we're gonna do some movement. So wherever you are in the world today, if you have some space to stand up, please do so. And we're just gonna take a couple deep breaths to get started. I'm gonna tell you about Molly the Monarch's life journey, which I am so excited about. So I need everybody to spread their wings a little bit, maybe move side to side. Maybe you can fly those wings a little bit. But this is our migration. This is our movement for the day. It's really important that we stretch our, those muscles and get moving before this program. <laughs> All righty. Raise your hand if you actually did stand up. I want to know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very great. Thanks so much, guys. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So we learned about migration. We learned a little bit about why our butterflies are here. But now, you're probably wondering, okay, Sarah, I think I know a few things about butterflies. Maybe I've heard the word caterpillar. Maybe I've heard the word chrysalis. Hmm. So I want you to get thinking and take just a second. We're not in a rush here. So take just a moment to think about how a butterfly comes to be. What happens in a butterfly's life? that actually makes them a butterfly. Do we have any ideas? I know we don't have our Q&A feature on today, but that's okay because you can tell the person next to you, you can say it out loud, you can say it in your head, you can draw a picture of it, whatever you might think, but I want us to get thinking before I give it away what we think Molly the Monarch, her life story is like. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you where it starts. Okay, I'm going to do that with a couple of photos. So Molly the monarch, she doesn't, she's not just born a butterfly. No, she's got a lot more work to do than that. I'm going to show you a few photos here. All right, are we ready? I'm going to lower these hands and go ahead and raise them if you can see what's on my screen here. It should look green, I'll tell you that much. Oh yeah, lots of people can see exactly what's going on. That is awesome. So what is happening on my screen here is what's called an egg. So monarchs, after they leave us, they go find a special plant that we'll talk about a little later to lay their eggs. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and take a moment because I know sometimes there can be a delay. But picture that you are holding a pen or a pencil and it has a sharp end on it. And we don't wanna to touch the sharp end, we just wanna take a look at it and imagine how small the end of that would be. And that's about how small our monarch egg is here. Right there, pretty tiny, very tiny. Now, Molly the monarch's mom is smart enough to know what kind of plant she's gonna lay this egg on and where she's gonna do it. So it's important to know that she is smart enough to say, you know what, I don't think I'm gonna put this egg on the top of the leaf. I think I'm gonna put this leg on the underside of the leaf or on the bottom side of the leaf. Do we have any ideas, maybe say to the person next to you, say it in your head, say it out loud, of why she might choose the bottom of the leaf? Hmm. I'm thinking her mom probably chose the bottom of the leaf because it's safer. So if I were a bird, let's say, and I were a bird, I were a predator, so that means I'm looking for other animals to eat. 
it would probably be a lot harder to see the egg on the bottom side, right? Probably a lot harder. Now here's something very exciting. The egg starts to grow something inside of it. So now it becomes a little bit of a different color. Raise that hand if you see the change in that egg there. The egg on my screen. Oh, lots of us do. Awesome. Very observant. I have my citizen scientists out there today, which just means people listening to this that are making observations, telling me what they see. Everybody can be their own scientist. Awesome. Now, something really cool happens, kids, and I am so excited to show you. And you might have guessed this. You might have screamed it in your head. You might have told the person next to you. But something really special happens with Molly. And it looks a little bit like this. Now, what in the world has just crawled out of the egg? Oh, my goodness. I believe it is our caterpillar. I think it's our caterpillar. And raise your hand if you see that caterpillar on the screen. And if you knew that that's what happens before Molly becomes a butterfly, oh my goodness. So many of us, very cool. So we have this egg laid on the underside of the leaf that eventually hatches. It hatches into a caterpillar in two to three days. So not tomorrow, maybe the next day, maybe the day after that. That's all it takes for this egg to hatch and out comes a caterpillar. Now this caterpillar comes, comes out and he's, you know, Molly the monarch is in this caterpillar right now. And they're saying, oh, I'm hungry. What do I want to eat? Do you think that they can just go to a buffet and, or a drive through and say, okay, um, I think I'm going to eat anything that I want. Raise your hand if you think that that they can just go to a drive through See a few of us, but not many people think that that's what they can do, and you're completely right. So what in the world do they eat? They're so hungry. And the first answer is kind of icky, but they eat their eggshell. And you might be thinking, Sarah, why are you telling me this? What do you mean they eat their eggshell? That's so gross. Well, first of all, the animal kingdom is super, super beautiful and very complex and complicated, and they know exactly what they're doing. So eating that eggshell is a very smart move, and I'm going to tell you why. The first reason that I might eat my eggshell if I have popped out as a caterpillar is because I am hungry, okay? That is just the fact of the matter. I am hungry, and I need to eat something. So what's going to happen is I'm going to eat my eggshell. And that has a lot of nutrients. That has a lot of really good things for me inside. Now, the second reason, which some of you might have guessed, is because that same bird that I was talking about that might have wanted to eat me as an egg on the underside of the leaf probably wants to eat me as a caterpillar too, right? So if I eat that eggshell and I crawl away and they don't know where I am, there's no evidence I was ever there probably pretty smart, right? So it's a way to hide from things that might want to eat the caterpillars. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit more about caterpillars. Molly the monarch is a caterpillar at this point. She just ate her eggshell. She did that for protection. Now I am so excited to show you these photos because it gets pretty crazy here in a second. I hope that we are ready for this. Okay, raise your hand if you see those two lovely caterpillars on my screen. Awesome. I love to see it. That is so incredible. Thank you so much for helping me out. That helps me a lot. Make sure that we are on track. So these two caterpillars are actually having a snack. And you might say, Sarah, you just said that caterpillars eat their eggshell. But that is one of two things that they eat. And the second is what they're munching on right here. And the word for that is milkweed. This plant right here, milkweed. So like a cow's milk plus a weed that you would find in your yard, milkweed. And that plant is pretty much the only plant that we're going to talk about today. So you can think when you hear milkweed, you can automatically think of our butterflies because that's the plant they're laying their eggs on and that's the plant that they're going to eat. So the caterpillars are hungry. They ate their eggshell. Now they're going to eat this milkweed. Oops. And we're going to slide on over to this one. So what happens as a caterpillar 
is you get bigger and bigger. The Molly the Monarch is getting bigger and bigger, just like you are all are getting bigger and bigger. I remember as a kid, every single time, every single year about, I would need to buy some new clothes. I would need to either go buy some new clothes or see if I could find some new clothes that fit me, maybe from somebody that I knew. And the reason that they do this is because they're getting bigger, just like you and I, and their skin, their exoskeleton isn't big enough. It's like, a, it's like a, wearing a sweater or wearing too tight of pants. It's not big enough. So what they need to do is shed this skin and get bigger. They need to drop those old clothes and get larger. And that's what's happening right here. He's shedding their skin. And this happens a few times right? Molly the Monarch is like, you know what? It is time for me to get a new style every once in a while. Now they're shedding their skin and they only exist as a caterpillar for not very long at all, okay? So it's important to know that they're not a caterpillar very long, but they are getting huge. These caterpillars are getting so big. They grow 2,000 700 times their size. And you might say, okay, big deal. What does that even mean? So imagine you as a newborn baby, can't talk yet. You're just looking around and you're very small, right? You're very small. Imagine you growing to the size of a blue whale. That is how big they get. They're so tiny when they start and they get bigger and bigger and bigger and grow to the size of a full caterpillar. But that would be like a human baby growing to the size of a blue whale. And you might be saying, Sarah, I've never seen a caterpillar the size of a blue whale. And that's not what I mean, because they start smaller and then they multiply and get bigger and bigger until they come out like a normal, normal caterpillar that you've seen. So let's continue on with these with this story because we're getting close to a really special part in this story. It looks a little bit like this. So the caterpillar has been munching on some milkweed and all of the sudden they decide, you know what, I think it's time to find a branch that I really like. So raise your hand if you see my caterpillar on the screen there, kind of eyeing what branch she might think that she likes the most. This is Molly. Awesome. So they, they're looking for a branch and then they do this really cool thing, which you might have already guessed. And I call this a J because this, this caterpillar is going to get themselves in a J shape. So raise your hand if your name starts with the letter J. Oh my, I see Jeremy and Jasmine. Wow. Lots of J names. That's really cool. Julie. Oh, that's super, super awesome. So that's how you can remember this step is they get into a J and this is the caterpillar's head. You see its little antenna here. This is the caterpillar's head and they use this very special, they spin a very special material out of their spinner and make what we call a silk button. And the way you can think about that is basically just my feet sticking to the leaf but I make a, my body makes a really cool sticky substance that's gonna hold me there. It's my silk button. And then Molly the Monarch is going to shed her skin one more time. She's gonna shed it one more time and slowly make what we call a chrysalis. Now moths, maybe you've heard the word cocoon, moths make cocoons, butterflies make what's called a chrysalis. And so believe it or not, our caterpillar is inside this chrysalis. They are inside that. They are inside the chrysalis. All right, and it's this pretty green color, absolutely. But I'm gonna stop and have you think about, okay, what happens next? And I'm gonna use a friend to help me. But while I do this, I want you to think about, okay, what happens next? So we have our caterpillar, our egg, and then out hatched our caterpillar. And it got bigger, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. 
So I want you to help me think. So here I have our caterpillar. Let's find his little antenna here. So this, this is Molly the monarch after she hatched and got big. And then she goes and she finds that stick that she likes. Let's say she's using this one. And she sheds her skin. Raise your hand if you can hear me okay. Awesome. So she sheds her skin. This is her shedding her skin. Don't know if you can see you exactly what's happening here, but something kind of cool. She turns herself into the chrysalis. Now this is that green chrysalis we saw on the screen. What in the world happens next? So after about 12 days or two weeks, somewhere in there, something really cool happens. And the chrysalis turns clear. So I can't make this turn clear, but what I can do is show you what the clear chrysalis looks like. The chrysalis turns clear. And this gives you a hint. Raise your hand if you see what you think might be in that clear chrysalis. Oh, awesome. So something very, very cool happens. And out comes, I'm not sure if you can see exactly what's going on, but I'm sure you have an idea here. The chrysalis splits open down the side and out comes this beautiful, beautiful butterfly, our monarch butterfly. So you might be thinking, that's exactly what I said happened, Sarah. And I would be super proud of you. I'm sure that there's many out there that knew that. And I'm going to show you what this looks like in real life on my screen. So we're going to go back to that clear chrysalis. Now that clear chrysalis is opening up and out is coming our beautiful Molly, the monarch, our Western monarch butterfly. And out she comes. So here, I know you see an old chrysalis in the background, or this is, this is a caterpillar currently in this one, but this is what I want you to look at, that clear chrysalis she just crawled out of. She just crawled out of there. And now we have our monarch. Our beautiful Western monarch, raise your hand if you think that our monarch that just crawled out of her chrysalis is ready to fly. Raise that hand if we think she is ready to fly. I see some hands and I would say that that's a fair guess. You would say, okay, she's out of her chrysalis. She's out of, she's out of that. She's ready to fly. And the answer is she's not quite. So what she needs to do is her wings are a little wet, they're a little damp. And what she needs to do is pump fluid from her abdomen, from her tummy into those wings to dry them out so she can fly away. So she can fly away. So there's Molly the monarch. And after a couple of hours, she's ready to fly. Now, are you all ready to see our monarch butterfly. I wish I could show you them in person, but this is almost just as beautiful. I'm gonna show you some photos here of our beautiful monarch butterfly. Now look at that. She is ready to fly. Raise your hand if you think that is a beautiful creature there on the screen. Absolutely, I do as well. I absolutely do. Very, 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 very cool, right? So she's ready to fly. And here's some other photos. So we have multiple butterflies in our grove when it's our season. And I just want you to take, take them in and just take a moment to appreciate how beautiful these creatures are because they're so fascinating and so cool. It's our Western monarch butterfly. Now here, we're just gonna talk about the life cycle, how Molly the monarch got here one more time. So what happens is she starts as the egg. She starts as the egg and then out hatches the caterpillar. We learned about the caterpillar. And now when somebody asks you about the Western monarch, you can tell them, oh, the next thing is the caterpillar forms the chrysalis. And then what, take a moment and think, what is our last step? Who comes out of the chrysalis? Hint, it is on this page. 
guess who comes out? Our beautiful monarch butterfly comes out of the chrysalis. And that is the story of my beautiful friend, Molly the monarch, who is with us here today. So raise that hand. I'm going to lower these so we can do it one more time. Raise that hand if you feel like you learned something about how a monarch butterfly gets here to our park here at Pismo State Beach Monarch Butterfly Grove. Very cool. That is their life cycle, which just means their circle of life, right? Their circle of life. So now that we learned about migration and how Molly the monarch got here, we're going to learn a little bit about our grove. We're going to talk about our grove at the end. I'm going to take you on a tour. I'm so excited to show you our beautiful trees here and the monarch's favorite spots when they are here in season from November to February. But I want to tell you a little bit about why Molly the monarch is so special. And I need a few things to help me out with this. So I want you to tell the person next to you, maybe think in your brain, write it down, say it out loud, maybe dance as you say it, whatever you want to do. One reason that a monarch is cool or special or one cool fact you would want to tell somebody about the monarch. And while you do that, I'll be right back. Alrighty. So, one thing about monarchs, you might have said they fly. They're really great at flying, and you would be exactly correct. But their wings, what they use to fly, are actually very special. So, when you think about, hmm, what do I use to hear? What do I use to hear? I want you to think about it. Probably said ears. That's what humans use to hear. Now, what butterflies use to hear or to sense vibrations, which means pick up on the things that's going, that is going on around them, things that they can kind of hear or sense, are their beautiful monarch wings. So raise your hand if you can see my monarch wings here. Awesome. So these wings are very special because not only do they help me fly as a monarch butterfly, but they help me sense what's going on around me so I can tell where I am and what I need to do as a butterfly. So my beautiful wings are almost like my ears. Now what in the world do monarch butterflies, what does Molly the monarch use to see? And you might say, okay, Sarah, you tricked me with the first one because I thought it was ears because that's what humans learn to, or humans use to hear. What do butterflies need to see? So tell the person next to you, and raise your hand if you said that butterflies use their eyes to see. Awesome. Looks like lots of us. So butterflies have what's called compound eyes. Raise your hand if you can see my beautiful compound sunglasses. Awesome. Raise your hand if you think that I should wear these every day. <laughs> Great. Thank you for your support. So these compound eyes are what butterflies use to see. And compound just means they have a lot of different parts. Do you see all the different parts of my sunglasses? These are my compound eyes. So I have my wings, I have my compound eyes. Now what might I use to taste? Hmm, let's think about it. So humans probably use their tongues to taste, their taste buds. What do you think I use to taste? Hmm. I don't know. The answer, as a monarch butterfly, are my feet. And you might say, Sarah, what do you mean your feet? You don't use your feet to taste. That is so icky. No, actually, because that special plant that the monarch uses is called milkweed, we learned about that. That's the only plant they really like. They need to be able to tell which plant is milkweed and which isn't. So these are my taste buds. And I wish that you could see these on my feet, but I'm gonna put them on my feet and you just need to trust me that they're there, okay? So I am putting my taste buds onto my feet, which is a very important part. 
And no, they don't taste. They don't have taste buds on their feet, but that's how they tell which plant they're going to eat. So that's why we say that's what they use to taste. Now, what does a monarch butterfly with the compound eyes and the monarch wings use to smell? And you might say, okay, Sarah, hmm, maybe their nose. You've tricked us a couple times. We've gotten it right a couple times, their nose. And I'm going to show you what they use to smell. Think about things on a butterfly we haven't talked about yet. Do you notice anything different about me? Raise your hand if you see something that I wasn't wearing at first that you now notice is here. Awesome. The answer is the word antenna. So antenna that I have right here are what I use to smell. And my compound eyes are what I use to see. And my wings, get them in the shot here, my beautiful monarch wings are what I use to fly and to hear or to sense where I am. And my feet, which I can't show you because it's too difficult, but my feet are what I use to taste. Now I knew I probably wouldn't be able to show you my feet just because it's too tough. I want to make sure our iPad is nice and sturdy today. But I'm going to show you this right here. Give me one moment here. And this shows you a little bit about it. Now this says the monarch tastes with its feet. And the reason that I put tastes in quotations there is because of what I told you. It senses which plant is milkweed. But here is just a silly image that should help you remember, monarchs use their feet to decide which plant they're on. That's my funny mouth. And this is a monarch tasting with its feet. Very cool. I'm going to leave that up for one second and make sure that it loads for everyone. Very cool. Monarch tastes with their feet. So I think I'll probably leave my antenna on and maybe my wings, but I'm going to take off the glasses because I want to be able to see you during this last part. And this last part, we're going to learn a little bit about the monarch body. And I've already said the word abdomen. Raise your hand if you remember me saying the word abdomen. Awesome. Very cool. I'm just going to set my wings here for a second. So a lot of us have heard that word abdomen. And this is one of my last photos I'm going to show you today about the different parts of a butterfly. So raise your hand if you see kind of that pinkish orange um screen with that monarch on there awesome very cool great looks like a lot of us can see it that's all that matters so this teaches us about the monarch and we have the head which is the head right here we have what's called the thorax thorax so say that word out loud twice ready thorax thorax and we're going to do it two more times thorax thorax and that's a tricky part that means that middle section there. And then we have what's called the abdomen or the belly. And that's the lowest part. So can we say abdomen together? Ready? One, two, three, abdomen. Awesome. So we have our head, our thorax, the middle part, and our abdomen. So in order to remember this, you could say, Sarah, those are pretty tricky words. There's a lot going on. But we're going to sing a song. And we're going to learn those parts of the body okay so I'm gonna sing it one time through and then I'm gonna put the lyrics on the screen so you can help me okay but we're gonna talk about our head our thorax and our abdomen okay so it's gonna go head thorax abdomen abdomen head thorax abdomen abdomen eyes six legs and antenna two head thorax abdomen abdomen so we're going to do it one more time before I put the lyrics on the screen because I'm still getting it too, all right? Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Eyes, six legs, and antenna, two. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. All right, so I'm going to put these lyrics on the screen. Hopefully this can help you follow along. It, follow along. If not, just do your best from memory. But I think we do need to be standing for this. All right, so here we go. Raise your hand if you see my blue screen up there with my bug. This is called our insect song. 
for today. Very cool. All right, we're going to start on three. Ready? One, two, three. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Eyes, six legs, and antenna, two. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Awesome. Very cool. I'm going to leave this up for one more second so we can just read through it. Great. Hopefully everybody got to participate in the song. If not, that is okay. Just one of our many parts of our program today. So we learned. Let's just review how much you, you all have learned today. You've learned about migration, to move. To move, right? You have learned about the life cycle or how Molly the monarch got to be with us in the monarch grove last season. You learned about what how the uh, monarch butterfly smells and sees and tastes and all of that good stuff. But now we're gonna tour our grove. And before we tour our grove, I want to share with you one more thing about these butterflies. And I wanna get us a close up here. I'm gonna do one of the caterpillar and one of our actual butterfly here. Let's see, which ones do I wanna choose? I like this one and I like this one. So I want you to take a second, look at our caterpillar and notice what color it is. That's what's important right now, is what color is this caterpillar? Hmm, maybe we see some black, maybe we see some yellow. Now what sorts of color is this monarch butterfly? And we'll take just about five seconds to check that out. I just want you to think about the colors of the caterpillar and the monarch butterfly. Now raise your hand if you said that they have bright colors. They're brightly colored. Great, it looks like a lot of us said, yeah, Sarah, they have bright colors. And you'd be correct. The reason that those caterpillars have bright colors is because they're toxic or they're poisonous. Same with the butterflies. And they eat milkweed, which is poisonous, but it does not hurt them because they're used to eating it. But the reason that they're brightly colored, what that means in nature, is it's a warning sign. It says, don't eat me, I'm poisonous, I'm poisonous. And that helps them to better survive or to not get eaten because they have those bright colors that warn predators. So raise your hand if you are ready. After learning all of this information and being an absolute rock star, raise your hand if you're ready to tour our grove. Oh my goodness, it looks like we are ready to go. So our grove here is very special. I'm gonna take you off of my tripod here and we're gonna take a little walk. And my monarch grove here, like I said, the butterflies are not here today. And that's okay because they'll be here later in the season. They'll be here in the winter months when it's nice and warm so they can, they can fly around. And we're walking to our grove we're thinking, okay, now where, what would be a good place if I were a Western monarch? What would be a good place for me? Let's think about this. What would be a good place for me to live? If I'm in this grove, where might you want to live? And you might see some things behind me and think, oh, that looks kind of nice. But what I'm going to do now that we're in the shade is flip the camera around. I'm going to try to go nice and slow but this is our monarch grove. And you might notice that it's kind of shady in here. It's shady. So it's covered in shade and it's just not as warm. It's just not as warm in here. And that's kind of a nice thing actually. The monarchs that live in here are protected from the wind and the rain and they can live in our beautiful grove here, which is just a word for a lot of trees. So we're going to end the program pretty soon here, but I just want to give you an idea. So I want you looking up here, and without moving the camera too much, let me get my hands right here. I want you all to close your eyes. It's really important you close your eyes right now because this could be really cool if we all close our eyes. So picture you're here with us. 
and you look up and you close your eyes because you're just blinking and all of a sudden, keep those eyes closed, all of a sudden open your eyes. Raise your hand if you see those things on my screen right now. Oh my goodness, it looks like we do. So we open our eyes and we see a cluster of butterflies, a cluster of butterflies. So these butterflies are clustered like this up in our trees, up here. And you might be saying, okay, Sarah, why do they do that? We're gonna talk about that in just a second here. So why do those butterflies cluster? Now, did you see that they kind of looked a little brown? So on the outsides, their wings looked a little brown. Let's look at that again. That's one of our favorite cluster photos. That was actually taken here, which is so cool. Let's look back at this cluster here. You see how, let's see, let me get my marker out. So you see how it's bright here, and then down here it gets a little dark brown. That's actually because the butterflies are trying to camouflage, and they're trying to act like dead leaves which sounds so silly, but when they close their wings up, they look like dead leaves, which helps them not to get eaten, right? So thousands of butterflies come to our grove and get into those little huddles, just like you saw those clusters, and stay with us from November to February. So that's a little bit about our grove and what you can find here when it is safe to come visit our park. That's the kind of thing you might be able to see at Pismo State Beach Monarch Butterfly Grove. Okay, so raise your hand if you feel like you learned something today that you didn't know before. Awesome, I love to see that. That's the best part, is just that we're learning something. And even if you don't remember it all, that's okay. It's, you took the time to come and learn today, which is really cool. And I encourage you to always be learning. And we're gonna end our program I'm just gonna tell you about something really quickly here. So let me set you down where you can be stable. Perfect. All right. So something very cool that we do here in the Oceano Dunes District, but at Pismo State Beach Monarch Butterfly Grove is we have a coloring sheet for all the kiddos out there that is really special. It's not just any normal coloring sheet. So raise your hand if you like to color. Raise your, yeah, awesome. I also love to color and I would raise my hand, I guess I can, but I would raise my virtual hand if I could. So coloring, something very fun that we offer through a very special coloring sheet. And parents, I'm going to tell you about this free download at the end, but I want to show both parents, guardians, kids, adults about our coloring sheets here. So I'm gonna put some photos up in order to do so. So this is a little bit of a blurry photo, but this is our coloring sheet. It looks like any normal coloring sheet at first glance, but when it is scanned using our Quiver app, and all of this information can be found on the sheet, so it uses our app here, this barcode to download the app. When it is scanned with a phone or a device, Apple or Android, it actually makes the child or your drawing come to life off the paper. So here's a picture that I took of my iPad doing that. So we colored this monarch butterfly here and it flies off the paper onto, on your screen. It looks like it's flying off the paper in the actual colors that you colored it. And it tells you all sorts of great facts. And here's another picture of my screen. So that's my butterfly flying off my page. And you can do that too. You can absolutely do that too by downloading our Quiver coloring sheet for our Western Monarch Butterfly. And I'm gonna put that information, um, it's on our Padlet, which is the first link on the slide I'm gonna share right now. So please feel free to download that hashtag, um, the hashtags that I'm gonna share with you in just a minute. But kiddos, everybody joining us, thank you so much for joining us here at Pismo State Beach Monarch Butterfly Grove. I really hope you learned something. Thank you so much for letting me be, be silly today and wear my antenna, even though we were done with our dress up. Um, thank you for, yeah, thank you for just being here and learning. And I really encourage you to get out there and utilize or use other ports programs, sign up for other programs. 
State Parks has a lot to offer as far as online programs. So with that being said, have a beautiful Tuesday. I am Sarah here at the Oceano Dunes District, Pismo State Beach, and thank you so much for learning about Western Monarchs with me. I'm gonna share this slide right now, just as promised. So here we have it. Again, feel free to screenshot this or take a picture with your phone, but what I wanna point out is that that coloring sheet that I just told you about can be located on our Padlet right here. So it's www.padlet.com slash Pismo Beach slash Butterfly. And that's where you're gonna be able to download that free sheet for you. Um, if for some reason you do have an issue with that, Padlet is a forum where you can ask questions. So please feel free to just ask about that and we can help you out. Kids, if you have any questions about the butterflies, use these links, help have your parents, your guardians, your adults, help you use these links to ask your questions that maybe I didn't get to answer today. So www.padlet.com slash Pismo Beach slash butterfly. And again, if you are inspired to draw anything beautiful related to butterflies or not today at Ports Program is all of our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as YouTube. And then we always encourage that hashtag Ports Program and hashtag Ports Fan Art because there is nothing better than us getting to see what you all have done at home. All right. So with that, that's it for today. Um, everybody have a great day and thank you so much for joining us here at Pismo State Beach, Monarch Butterfly Grove. Bye.